Hi folks, Rob from Edgebit here. Today I want to talk you through integrating secure enclaves into an EKS cluster. We're going to use our tool Enclaver to help us build one of these secure enclaves. And this is kind of what it looks like under the hood. Architecturally, what's really interesting about Enclaver is it just feels like running a container. So we have a build step and a run step. And that run step, instead of just running it at the container runtime, we're actually going to bootstrap a new secure enclave to run that same application. And uh, the run step, we actually want to do it a little bit differently because we don't want to do Enclave or run. We want to use Kubernetes. So we're going to use kubectl create and we're going to make a deployment. We're going to be able to scale that deployment. We're going to be able to stream logs back from it. You debug it the exact same way you would any other pod. So if you're asking yourself, what is a secure Enclave? Uh, what it is, is a really secure area of a VM. So today we're going to talk about EC2 machines and Nitro Enclaves. And they're really isolated by design. So what this means is you have a dedicated set of CPUs, which protects you against speculative execution attacks. You've got a contiguous encrypted set of memory. And then uh, this enclave doesn't look like anything that you've used before. There's no shell access, there's no disk, there's very limited networking. And what this means is the data that you put inside of this enclave is gonna remain inside of there. Any processing that you're doing can't be observed from the outside. And that's really, really powerful for building uh, really sensitive parts of your application, dealing with any sort of customer data, um, anything that you want to get protected. And that protection uh, is interesting because it, if you compare it to an EC2 machine, you know, there's a firewall there. And if you've got a compromised network, that can help protect you. But if it's misconfigured, sometimes you might have a compromised uh, host itself. A secure enclave can protect itself from this scenario because of that isolation. Even the host can't get in and observe the memory or look at what's going on inside of that enclave. Then if you extend that to the Kubernetes layer, uh, same thing there. Even if your entire Kubernetes cluster is compromised, what's happening inside of the secure enclave cannot be introspected. Uh, and that's really, really powerful, again, for the privacy and security of your customers. And part of the reason is that these secure enclaves kind of run to the side of your Kubernetes cluster. Um, you know, they're connected to a pod, and we'll talk about how that works, but they're not really on the same plane as your nodes. They are special VMs, but they're so locked down that uh, Kubernetes doesn't necessarily know about them. And when we instantiate a pod, what we do is tell that pod to instruct the hypervisor to boot one of these enclaves and connect it to our pod. Um, so we do that by mounting this device in um, nitro underscore enclaves, and that talks to the hypervisor. And so when we run kubectl log, what we're doing is communicating with that pod, but it's actually the set of the logs from the pod itself and the application running inside of the secure enclave. And remember, because of the isolation, even just being able to instantiate one of these secure enclaves doesn't mean you can attack it or introspect it. Um, again, the entire cluster, the entire node, even the pod can be compromised, and that secure enclave is still protected. And that is what makes it so, so powerful for either privacy or security-related features of your application. So let's take a little demo here. And first, we're going to run kubectl get pods. Let's see if we have any pods here. We don't. Um, then let's look at our nodes here. We're using a selector um, for enclave equals nitro. Um, and this is our node group that does have these nitro enclaves enabled, and we've got two of them. And so what we're going to do is run an application on both of these nodes. So let's take a look at what our enclave deployment looks like here. Um, so it's uh, replicas equals one. We'll scale it here in a second, but we'll start there. And it's got this topology spread constraints, which means that we only want one of these running per node. Um, and that's a limitation that comes from Amazon itself. And so we're going to tell Kubernetes about that. And then uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see we've got our node selector here. So we only want this to run on our set of nodes. And you could auto scale these nodes uh, if you, you know, needed more capacity. And then we're going to run this container. This is our application called a no fly list. Uh, and um, down here, you can see we've mounted in some of our um, hardware devices, like the Nitro Enclave I just talked about. And then we've got this huge pages. This is how we get our big contiguous set of memory. And then uh, last, we're going to run this as privileged uh, so that we can mount those hardware devices in. And then we've got some resource limits as well. And then the other interesting part is our memory here. Um, it's actually 500 on the outside. And then we're going to use 3 gigs for the Nitro Enclave itself. And so uh, you can tweak those values separately. Um, and that comes from our built image. All right, let's go ahead and create this deployment and watch it get scheduled to these nodes. And you'll see it happens pretty quick, just feels like a regular pod. There we go, it's already running. And let's go look at some logs from this and see what it looks like. You can see that we're getting logs from inside and outside of the container. Um, you'll see that we bootstrapped a new enclave and it's got an ID. And then here are the logs from inside. 
Um, and you can see that we're you know, listening on our port 8001, so we're ready to take requests to this application. And we also have some credentials that we fetched from the Amazon's metadata service that lets us talk to other Amazon services. All right, now let's go ahead and scale this deployment out and see what that looks like. And so we're gonna say kubectl scale and set our replicas equal to two. And what this is gonna do is uh, put another pod on our other node that we have. And so, whoops, misspelled that, replicas. Um, and so we scaled it, we should see that this uh, now has two pods, they're both running on both of those nodes. And then here in a second, let's actually scale it out a third time and then uh, see, we should see one of these pods go into a pending state because we don't have enough nodes for it. And if we added one, it would get scheduled. And there we go, we can see that that's happening. Um, and so now we could use a Kubernetes service, a load balancer or anything like that to actually put traffic inside of these uh, pods. And if you wanna hear more about this application, um, you can go to edgebit.io slash docs and we've got a full write up there. All right, let's delete this and clean up. And that is today's demo. Um, so again, uh, we've been talking about Enclaver, which is a tool to help you build, test, and run these secure enclaves. And it integrates really cleanly with your EKS cluster. We'd love for you to check it out. Uh, there's more information at edgebit.io slash Enclaver. And then this code is open source. You can see it on GitHub as well. We would love for you to join our community. Thanks.